and welcome to How to Drive Better Business Outcomes from your CMDB, part one of our two-part webinar series about the CMDB. So my name is Tabitha Ishman, and I'm the Marketing Manager of Excalibur Data Systems, and we're so excited today to be working with our partner, ShareWell, our preferred ITSM solution on this webinar series. So like I said, this is part one of two, and our second webinar will be hosted May 21st at 2 p.m. Eastern and will be about accelerating your understanding of the CMDB. More information later on in the presentation on how to register for that. But before we get started, I just wanted to share a few webinar logistics. So the webinar is being recorded, and the recording will be sent via email to all the participants tomorrow. We'll answer questions at the end in a Q&A session, but you can ask questions anytime during the presentation by typing them into the chat window. So now I'd like to introduce Mike Fuson, VP, uh, Senior Solution Architect and Consultant of Excalibur Data Systems, because I know he has a lot of great content for all of us today. So welcome, Mike. In, in, in IT. So it's a configuration management database. Oh, okay. Huh? What does that mean? Exactly. So CMDBs take multiple forms, right? You may have an Excel spreadsheet that has all of your laptops and desktops in it. That could be considered a CMDB. Um, it could be a printout that's hidden in a desk drawer or in a hidden compartment where you store those papers that you don't want people to run off with. Um, that's going to have the information on the CIs. Now, what we're talking about is really starting to move your CMDB into something that's really functional within the organization. It's great to have it out there in a SharePoint site. Um, so, you know, from my experience, and I'll just put it out there that I've been working with IT service management platforms for more than a couple of decades, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, but so often I see, hey, where, where are you storing your, your details on your servers? Well, it's in this SharePoint site, or it's in this custom-built database that we have, or in this access database uh, uh, for those of us that go back and remember what access is. Um, or it's 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 printed out uh, and then we we update it occasionally. Um, it could be almost anywhere. So how do we take that information and start to make it useful? But what is this CMD being made up of? Well, it's made up of configuration items or CIs. Okay, what's a CI? So a configuration item is generally an asset, physical or otherwise. So things like desktops, laptops, servers, Network devices, mobile devices, printers are some examples, but it could also be things like IP addresses, databases. Uh, we have a, a request right now that we're building for a customer that our conference rooms are gonna be a CI uh, or applications. So, huh, didn't you just, Mike, didn't you just say that this was supposed to be an asset? Well, these are all a form of assets that are out there. Uh, they are uh, pieces of data that we may be tracking. So using some, some examples, IP addresses. So if you're a managed service provider, you may have IP addresses that are public addresses that are an asset that a customer is paying a monthly fee for. You may need to track those. What customers are those assigned to? We have customers that have very mature CMDBs that also track even internal IP addresses. And those IP addresses then, as you start to expand out the maturity of your CMDB, are then able to be rolled up. What are all of the assets that encompass perhaps a VLAN? That's a group of IP addresses. Uh, or, okay, what device is on this IP address? Because these are our static IPs that we hand out versus things that may be in a dynamic list of IPs that are out there. Databases. Well, for a number of our customers, they're actually tracking the databases. Who owns the database? The database may actually move around. What SQL server is that database sitting on? Uh, who's responsible for it? This is a way for us to track these varying details on this. And then you get to things like conference rooms. Um, we had an interesting request recently because what the service desk deals with is a lot of requests for things to be done to conference rooms, a configuration of a conference room uh, or uh, other things. And so they wanted the ability to say, well, this call was about this conference room and here's what they asked for. Uh, and to be able to correlate all the different call calls they get on conference rooms. So it's a way for us to start to tie 
a lot of different disparate pieces of data together. So these configuration items are these smaller pieces. And, and for most customers, it starts with desktops and laptops and servers, um, maybe mobile devices, maybe printers, maybe network devices that are all part of this. So we love acronyms, don't we? I, this is one of my, my favorite memes that are out there. Um, you know, and, and, you know, mom, mom uh, says, well, what does I, IDK, LY, and TTL, TTYL mean? You know, and of course they get a response. I don't know. Love you. Talk to you later. Okay. I'll ask your sister. Right? Uh, we're, we're all about acronyms in, in, in IT, but those are a couple of the acronyms that live in our ITSM world and in our ITIL world, right? Do I need a CMDV? This is a question that we get asked a lot. It's kind of a big deal. Uh, for what we're, we're going to be hosting a webinar um, here. Hopefully it'll be, it's being rescheduled, but one of our customers is going to talk about how the CMDB is really the center of the universe for them and how they drive a lot of business value from their CMDB and give you know, very, a, a sneak peek under the covers of what someone is doing. But what, why is it a big deal? It not only allows you to track the assets and as many details as you want about those assets, as many details as you would like. Maybe it's financial details. Maybe it's the date that it was purchased, how much it cost, uh, depreciation metrics, anything that you want to track about the, 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 the data, this is now sitting in the CMDB. But it also allows you to have a life cycle for the assets. So an asset may come in. The asset may be a new asset. It's not been deployed yet. The asset may be an asset that has already been deployed, and maybe it was used by a particular customer within our, our ecosystem, and we pulled that asset back. Maybe they had a problem, they dropped it. Uh, I think of a, a, a specific example where I saw that happen uh, with, with one of my customers that I was working with. We're in the conference room, uh, they have to have an urgent meeting, and they asked us to vacate the conference room and find another place to sit for a little bit for our meeting. And we said, absolutely no problem. And one of my cohorts picks up his laptop, and the laptop slips and falls maybe an inch, and hits the table. Well, this is back in the days of the old mechanical hard drives. Boom, hard drive was toast. So I, their, 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 IT, their asset team was great. They just swapped out the laptop. Not a big deal and started pushing down uh, the things that he needed to that new laptop. Well, that laptop comes back in, gets the hard drive replaced, gets re-imaged, and it goes back into inventory. So now we have an asset that's an inventory that could be given out to another person or an asset goes through a full life cycle and it's going to be deprecated, um, it's going to be retired. Now, for many of our customers, they'll, 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 beyond retirement, they have a, a pre-retirement stage, so maybe we're gonna wind a server down, so we're gonna turn the server off for a few weeks and see if anybody's callers, and then we're going to go through a, re a full retirement process, and maybe that includes proper destruction of hard disk drives, uh, if that applies, um, or the machine is going to be donated or other things that may happen to it. But what was the full life cycle from when we acquired it all the way through to when that machine is no longer our, our, an asset that we're tracking? It allows you to relate assets to other things, things like incidents and changes and problems and releases, different things that are going to be sitting in our ITSM platform. We can relate assets to those things gives you a history of the asset. So as I had that example of that laptop was dropped and it was swapped out, well, the next person that gets that laptop, we already have details of the history of that laptop. So it was owned by someone else previously. It had been dropped, the hard drive was replaced. So here are the things that have gone on with this laptop. And we're able to see that entire history every time it's been called in on. Now, maybe the person that had it before, I think of another case where uh, one of the folks that I was, I was working with, they were, she was constantly having problems with her network card, um, her, her network port in the laptop. And for certain things we did, we had to plug into the network. And it just continually gave her problems and they, you know, service desk would do a great job and walk her through replacing it. Finally, they said, you know what, there's just something wrong with the, the network port we're gonna go ahead and we're going to re replace the laptop. So they gave her a new laptop, no more problems, but then that other laptop ended up being repaired and it was interesting having a conversation with them about it because the laptop went through a repair process and then 
the next person called in and said, I'm having problems with the network port. Well, it's new to them, so they don't, aren't aware of it, but the folks that were servicing it had seen the history. This had been a continual issue with this laptop. So how many calls do we take? How many things do we do in trying to fix that same problem? Or is this maybe a bigger issue for that laptop? And they actually, it actually turned out they had a number of laptops that had the same issue. Um, and the incident manager actually correlated that and they found that they had a batch, there was about 10 they ordered at one point that all had problems with their network port. So they work with the vendor to remediate that issue. Um, you know, apparently there was a, a batch, that, a, batch, a few batches that went out from, from the particular manufacturer and they all seemed to have problems and the only solution was a full motherboard replacement. But they were able to correlate that data because they had information within their CMDB on the history of these things that had gone on. It also allows you to relate CIs to other CIs. So we're talking about upstream and downstream relationships. So that correlation, that dependency of relationships between those. So as I talked about before, a database, for example, might be considered a configuration item. Well, we know that that database sits on this SQL server and, and that SQL server is this particular asset. And so we know if that server or potentially there's a disk array involved or other things that we've correlated together from an upstream downstream perspective, as we've correlated those things together, do we potentially now have a uh, other issues that may crop up because we're having an issue with a particular configuration item? We also then have the ability to correlate these upstream and downstream relationships to things like change management, um, problem management, et cetera. All of these other things that we wanna be able to do within our organizations to be effective. And there's so much more that you can do with your CIs within your CMDB. So as I'm talking about, hey, a system goes down, if you mature your processes and you're into the world of event management, so an event triggers that then gets written to the particular configuration item. And that particular event tells us that that device just went down. We could be setting off alarms and saying, hey, this particular server, or it could be a router, it could be a switch, just went down. But because of our upstream and downstream, our dependency relationships, we know everything else that might be affected by that particular outage. Or maybe we just know something went down. Somebody calls and says, yeah, we're having a problem with XYZ switch. And we pull that up in the system. And because we built these relationships, we now know what other items may be affected by that. That may affect a particular system. It may affect um, a, a couple of databases. We can start to now look at all of that data and say, okay, what's our impact? Because all of a sudden the phones blow up and no one can get to the document management system. Well, okay, the switch, uh, in the data center that those servers were were hooked up to now has died and we didn't have a secondary card backing up to another switch. Perhaps maybe it's a single point of failure. Um, so document the document management system is down due to the failure of a piece of hardware. Is there a lot that we need, we need to get the server team involved? Probably not. That server may be just fine. Let's let the network team get the switch replacement done and let's see what comes back online. But we know what systems to check now because we have that data provided by our CMDB. So how many of you that are on the call, this is that uh, fun show of hands thing, how many of you guys have a CMDB and are leveraging it in some fashion? So Ollie, I see you have one. So a few of you guys have CMDBs out there. Well, Jill, you have a CMDB, I would hope so. Um, and so a lot of you are, are, are leveraging your, your, your CMDB, but you may be leveraging it in different ways. And you can, if you click the, the hand thing again, it'll put your hands down. And if I ask another question, then you'll put your hands up again. So may, maybe in chat, you can tell me, for some of you that don't, don't have a CMDB, why don't you have a CMDB? And I'll move forward and we'll, we'll talk about some of, some of those reasons here in a moment. So one thing we hear a lot is, but we don't have a discovery tool. So how do we populate a CMDB? Well, first of all, what is a discovery tool? 
and, and a discovery tool um, could be something like Sharewell Asset uh, Management, which is a uh, tool from Sharewell Software that does discovery of assets within the environment. It could be SCCM is your discovery tool, which may be discovering your Windows devices. Um, it, there are multiple discovery tools that are out there. Um, there are ones that are integrated to Sharewell, things like Device 42 um, and uh, Re Resolves product um, that integrate to Sharewell and can feed your CMDB. So they're helpful, but having the data in the CMDB is the first step on what is a longer journey. So for a, for a lot of customers, they may not have a discovery tool or maybe they only have SCCM, but they've got a lot of Linux devices. Well, where are those being tracked now? So if they're being tracked in a spreadsheet, could we pull those into the CMDB, import those in and start managing that data within our CMDB? Doesn't have to be automatically populated, it could be manually managed. And I uh, picked on uh, Steve Castellana and, and Joe uh, Markey are here from uh, Atlantic Health, and they've got an interesting uh, uh, item in their CMDB they call applications. And it's how they track some of the larger system applications and the applications can have sub applications as well. Uh, but one of the things that they do is that that is relatively manually managed because there's not a discovery tool that's gonna feed the kind of data they're looking for. And they've got processes that sit behind managing those assets things that the owners of those applications need to do to ensure that the data is being kept current and uh, the right information is out there. But the key is having a cohesive strategy and managing it effectively, and most importantly, consistently. So if you're manually managing your configuration items within your CMDB, are we doing that in a consistent way? And that could be simple things, like when a change goes in, uh, one of the uh, final tasks that you're taking care of is making sure the CMDB is updated and maybe nothing needs to be updated, but it's putting a, uh, something out there to let people know that it, this is something that they may need to do. So it, it doesn't necessarily have to be all automatic. It doesn't have to all come from a discovery tool, although much of it can. And then you start to look at discovery tools and then move into tools that not only do discovery, but also the dependency mapping they start looking at the type of traffic that goes between the various devices that are out there. So they can tell what devices are attached to which switch. They can tell what, what applications or databases are, are on which servers, and then which web servers may be hitting those servers, so on and so forth. There are uh, great tools that are out there that do discovery and then also can do the dependency mapping portions to help you understand and, and not need to populate an upstream downstream relationship on a manual basis, but it will actually populate those upstream and downstream relationships for you, which lets you start to visualize your overall environment and your overall system. So a you know, discovery tool does that population automatically of the CIs, that does not preclude that certain data may be manually managed. There may be data that's part of those assets that you're managing manually. Think of the financial data, if you're tracking that. Well, the discovery tool is not gonna discover the financial information. That's gonna be things that are manually tracked. So things that you might do in your, in your platform, in Sharewell, what we would do is lock a bunch of the fields that are coming in from what we call our gold source, from our discovery tools. Those are things that are gonna be fed and overwritten on a scheduled basis. Maybe it's once an evening, maybe it's multiple times per day. Um, but that data is being fed in. But there's other fields that we may be managing. And for some of our customers, for example, that are in the utility industry, they have certain things they need to know about assets, like is the asset a SOX asset? Because that comes with a higher level of control that needs to go on to different things that happen with that asset. Um, they're also under certain uh, requirements that uh, if it's, it's something, a, uh, a what we call a SIP asset, something that would um, be something that needs to be tracked at a higher level or maybe things that certain users, if they're not cleared, aren't able to see details of. And so those are details that may be manually managed and are driving to part of our process. But dependency mapping tools, they also help to automate a lot of the things that you're doing and they'll automate a lot of that relationship detail from CI to CI. Bear in mind that a discovery or dependency mapping tool is just that. It's a tool 
to help keep the CMDB healthy. But it's just a tool. So hopefully everybody's still awake. One of my, uh, I can a cheeseburger little cats that are out there. But what makes a good and healthy CMDB? So I always use the statement that a CMDB is much like a garden. It requires care and tending. If it's just left alone, it'll grow weeds and it'll lose value. And we've seen this with a lot of our customers that we've worked with where the CMDB hasn't been tended. And so things have become stale. We don't even know where that asset is or what's happening with that asset. With that with that asset. So everyone needs to have a hand in maintaining the CMDB. And if we put that into the proper processes and procedures, we can help manage that. Perhaps one process, and this is something that some customers have done, they have what I refer to as CMDB grand poobahs. Um, they, they are folks that are responsible for managing the overall asset structure of what's in the CMDB. So they're checking to see when was the last time an asset was updated? If it's been a year and a half since the last time anything was updated on this asset, is it something that we maybe need to do something about or I need to check with the, uh, the, the owner of this asset and say, do we still have this? Is this still out here? But some things just live and they don't have many changes that happen to them and that's okay too. But what does a good and healthy CMDB really get us? For mature and uh, organizations, it really becomes the center of the universe. So many things can be derived from being able to, to look at things from a CMDB or a CI perspective. It gives us information to better resolve incidents. So one example of that might be giving the history of a CI. We know that, hey, this computer, this laptop's had this problem before with other owners, or they've called in about the same issue multiple times. Maybe we need to take an escalation path or a different route to resolving this issue. The other thing that we'll see in many cases, and when you think about all of the challenge that we're all dealing with now with folks working from home, um, and you know we don't have some of the tools that may be necessarily available to us, um, they're a little bit more difficult to, to get access to, what we're able to do from a CMDB perspective is perhaps we've um, we've captured all the software um, through through our uh, through a uh, discovery tool that may be on. And I'll I'll take Cam as an example. Um, so shareable asset management has discovered all of the software that's on a particular device, and it's rediscovering that on a regular basis. And within the CMDB, it's telling us what are all the applications that are loaded on this particular device. Well, when you're trying to manage and somebody's maybe having to load a piece of software and you're going to remote in and you go to load it and it gives you some weird error when it's trying to install, by being able to look at that data about that particular CI, you may see, oh, wait a minute, we know if they have this particular other application, we try to load this one, it won't load properly. We need to take a different set of steps. Maybe there's a knowledge article that handles that. Um, or these two applications, if we load this one, it breaks this one. So what are the things that they're dealing with? What do they have loaded? Um, and how can I now, now better help and more quickly resolve the issue that they're having? Helps us understand how things are interconnected. But one of the things that we see that CMDB derives a ton of value for is helps us avoid problems or conflicts in changes in releases, et cetera. So when you're actually going to do a change and we've attached the CIs, that are affected by that change, we can do some collision analysis. Are there other changes scheduled at the same time against the same CI? So we may need to stack our changes. They're gonna do Windows updates to that CI, but I also need to make these other changes, which is gonna re require that CI to be potentially restarted. We can identify those, those things before they're a problem. And I think back to the, the olden days uh, for me, um, we were working with a customer and uh, we, were, we were working with a product before Sharewell existed um, that was a, uh, a basic ser service desk platform and we were doing an upgrade. And the Oracle team wanted us to move the database to a new server. Well, great, we're doing the upgrade so we can just move the database. We have to load the whole database. And that took a couple of hours. Now, we didn't have real effective change management um, at that customer at the time. And so in the middle of our database load, they rebooted the Oracle cluster. 
because that was on their maintenance schedule. Well, of course, our load stopped, and now we've got a partially corrupt database. Now, relatively easy to fix, they went ahead and just simply reloaded, uh, uh, just, just went ahead and, and flushed our database and had us start reloading it. The challenge to that was we had to start over. So we'd lost the hour and a half we had been waiting for the database to load. And so were we going to make our, our change window where we had to have the system back up and running for the technicians to be, be able to take calls first thing in the morning? Um, and so a more effective change management would have avoided. And I, I always talk about when you start to look at that collision detection and you're leveraging the CMDB to do that, it's a lot like an electrician putting a lockout tag on something. So while they're working on a switch, somebody doesn't go flip the breaker back on and you know, now the electrician gets a surprise. Um, they, they use those basic uh, sort of things to, to do that. Um, but by having that data and being able to now correlate it together, we're able to get much more out of our system. Bottom line is it allows us to better serve our customers. If we didn't have that outage issue that I, that I just described um, as an example, we wouldn't have had the service desk for the first half hour they were taking uh, calls on their backup system, which was taking calls via a spreadsheet and then having to enter those later. Fortunately, the call volume was pretty small, so it wasn't a huge issue, but it could have been a larger issue. And it was a situation that could have been very easily avoided by effective management of our change by having a robust and very healthy CMDB. So let's, let's take a look at what this, this looks like to a great degree for folks. What does this look like? And, and I'm uh, you know, going to use ShareWell um, as our example of what a, a CMDB looks like. And all of you that are ShareWell customers that are on the line have most of these capabilities there. So I need to switch my screen that I'm sharing. So bear with me for one moment while I do that. And so you guys should now be seeing a wonderful, lovely ShareWell system. But as an example, here is some of the CIs that are available within our ShareWell platform out of the box. These are the things that make up the basis of the CMDB and that we can add things to this as we want. But one of the things that the CMDB allows us to do when you start to look at a particular CI, so if we take a look at a laptop or a computer, this laptop or computer has a bunch of data. And this, a lot of this data may have been fed in, fed in from a discovery platform. But then we also have details on financial data. So who was our supplier? What invoice was this part of? What was the purchase date? Well, this is a way we might be able to correlate back all of the devices that were part of a particular invoice and say, well, what were all the laptops bought at the same time? And we've had a number of them that have had a similar problem. So maybe we can be proactive and avoid that issue on other ones that people may not have already noticed. And then you start to look at things like upstream and downstream relationships. So this is tied to a network switch. Um, by being able to have this information, it allows us to do things like visualizing our CMDB. Right, so how does this device end up working all the way upstream to our firewall at the top level? So if any one of these were to go down, I may lose connectivity. I may not be able to get to the internet. And so if we knew that one of these was in an alert mode where it was say offline because we're feeding in event data, then all of a sudden when this person calls and says, I can't get to the internet, I know exactly why. Not a real hard thing to do, but that person's calling in, right? So they're calling in and they're, we have an incident that they're calling in about. And this is where we start to get that correlation, right? You, they, we have the configuration item that they're calling in about. So if this is Jose calling in about his laptop, I as a technician very, very quickly can go out and look at it from the perspective of this particular device that this person is calling about 
And I have any events that may, may have related to this particular device, but I also have my upstream and downstream, so my ability to visualize and maybe understand exactly what the problem is and be able to explain to the customer what's going on, what we're doing, and you know, we're gonna keep them posted. It could be a very, very quick call, and I'm not going through a whole bunch of steps to try to determine exactly what's going on because I already know, well, he can't get to the internet because the switch that he's connected to is down. Now, the, the other thing that, that this allows me to do also from this, this view is I'm able to see other incidents that may have related to this particular item, problems that this, this particular item may be associated with, change requests, so on and so forth. But this is that, that robust nature of allowing the CMDB to help us understand what is going on within our overall environment. And how can we better serve that customer? Because I have a full idea of what is happening with that customer and their device that they're calling about. Now, one of the other things that we're able to do, excuse me, I had a little frog in my throat, throat there. Let me grab a quick little sip of water. When I look at this from a change management perspective, I then have the ability to, to start to do some of that correlation. So from a change request perspective, as I start to, to tie in my configuration items, and maybe um, it's that we've got a couple of servers that are involved. So it's going to be this server, and then I can add my other configuration items. So I've got another server that's also involved in this overall change that's going to go on as I start to go through my process of doing my change I can visualize my collision detection so there's another RFC scheduled against this particular item okay wait a minute so do I potentially uh, have an issue because I didn't know there was another change going on when you think about so often the number of teams that may interact with a particular device. So the server team may have a responsibility for that, but you also have, say, are the applications person, you have a responsibility for your application, but that application is dependent on that particular server. So are there other things that are happening with that server that we need to understand so we can avoid a potential collision, that the Windows team reboots that server in the middle of us doing something that we need to do? And we can make sure that those things are stacked and racked up correctly as we go to move forward with our changes. It also allows us to you know, under, understand the interconnectivity because from a CMDB perspective, I can look at a visualization of this particular CI. So here's my, you know, here's my other nodes that are going against this particular item. So there's a change that's happening here. But are there other nodes from an upstream or downstream perspective? Or if I want to look at it from the other server's perspective, the other server that may be on there. So one's my file server, and you know, that I want to take take a look at it from this perspective. Um, I can actually you know, go out to this particular item and understand, okay, does this one potentially have a conflict? and be able to look at its network map and see what items it's tied to and understand how this change may be affected. Now, then you also then get into the concept of releases and it's the same thing. How are all of these things interconnected and what are the things that I'm doing that may impact my ability to deliver effective service to our customers, right? We wanna have strive for everything's up all the time and we know as IT folks that's just not going to happen it's not realistic everything's going to remain online all the time their maintenance has to be done things have to be taken down updates have to be done patches have to be loaded we have things that we have to do in order to keep everything humming but how do we minimize that impact and it, a lot of it's by being by having a very healthy very robust CMDB that helps us understand what are the things that are we're touching and what are the things that may be impacted by what we're doing? 
If it were easy, a caveman could do it, but it's not easy because as I said, the CMDB is a living, breathing organism that requires us to care for it. If we're not maintaining the data that's there, we're not making sure things are in there, we're not doing processes to understand are things getting out of date? And I'll use a particular use case example of something that one of our customers does um, with uh, particularly their laptops. So I, as a consultant, when I was working with them, was issued a laptop. And then as I come off the project, I have to return that laptop uh, to the manager I was assigned to. And that manager is responsible for getting that laptop back to be re-imaged and reused for the next person that needs to use it. Now, one of the things that we were able to do is because the data within our CMDB was being discovered by a discovery tool, we knew the last time that laptop had checked in. So they created a pretty cool process in that they had a last date, you know, that they heard from this particular device. And if that date went 30 days past due, they would automatically flag the laptop. So we have a you know, status of this laptop. This is that life cycle of a laptop. And they would put it into a status of MIA stolen. And they had a team that looked for it and they had a dashboard that said, hey, here's all of our possible MIA stolen. And then they had, they had an exception process, but an exception could be granted because perhaps that particular device um, maybe something that they know is sitting at a particular location that can't check in. Or maybe it's a device that's been given to the CEO to take home and the CEO re regularly, rarely boots it up so it doesn't check in very often. So we're not too stressed about that device. We know where it is. It's in a particular location. But they're able to now check in on those devices. And what they found when this process was first put into place, there were a lot of devices that came up pretty quickly, possibly MIA stolen. And what was happening is these managers that I as a consultant was returning my laptop to, were they were still sitting on their uh, on a table in their office or stuck in a drawer. They hadn't been sent back down. So they were able to recover. They did find in a number of cases that the laptop had really gone missing. Well, okay, that's a potential security risk. Now, if you have reporting requirements or you have uh, uh, anything that may require you to do notifications, you, in this particular case, this client could be subject to fines if they didn't get all over that real, real quick. And a couple of them, they had found, okay, somebody had actually gone through IT security and had reported their laptop stolen from their car, but there was no report on that. They had a report in you know, IT security system, but they didn't have a report against the CI. So that's where that process and procedure, or maybe a use of ISM, IT security management within ShareWell, as an example, could be a good use because they could put a security event in, tie that CI to it and say, this laptop is reported stolen, uh, here's the police report details, and you've now got a tracking of that, and that laptop is now put into a stolen MIA status. And that may trigger other things to, to be watched for. Um, we had one of our uh, Surface devices for Excalibur be stolen from one of our salespeople's uh, trunk. And so we, we immediately, as it happened, you know, he filed a police report that immediately notified us. So we started monitoring for that device to pop back up because it would actually call back into to, to our, our tools to see if it came, came back up or came back online. Because we have, unbeknownst to the person that stole it, we used the uh, Beyond Trust, formerly known as BombGuard, remote support, and we had a jump client on there. So had it come back online, we could have actually sent a command to it to wipe the device uh, or possibly remote controlled it and <laughs> turned the camera on and maybe got some pictures. Um, there are also tools out there that do that automatically. Um, if a device gets marked as stolen, um, as soon as it comes online and it connects to the internet, um, it will start snapping photos. Uh, and, and so, you know, this all starts to drive that healthy CMDB. Do we know what's going on with our devices? Do we know where, where they are? Or do we have a whole bunch of devices sitting in our CMDB that say they're active, and these are things we deprecated months ago? I'll pick on one of our, our, our other folks that are on the panel here, 
uh, one of my clients um, uh, is a real estate company. And we were looking at different data um, uh, in their system. And they have a great, cool process where they look at, hey, what, is, what does SCCM tell us? And then what does our CMDB tell us? And is there any differences? Do we have devices that SCCM is showing that aren't showing up in our CMDB? And we have CMDB items that aren't showing up in SCCM. Well, there's a, bit of, a little bit of a gap there um, because it is still right now a manual process for those devices. Like they had, had deprecated a lot of their desktops and moved people to do laptops, but some of the desktops didn't get deprecated. So until somebody catches it, it doesn't get done. Could we automate that within our CMDB? Could we make that something that's healthy uh, and, and help us to maintain the health of our CMDB? There are a lot of things that you can do, but a healthy CMDB helps us understand what are the assets and what are we managing. And I just, just was on the phone with them this morning and we were talking about um, the speakerphone pucks from Jabra. And you only, you know, they're, they're not inexpensive and you only have so many. Wouldn't it be great for that to be a tracked asset? You know, they're not super expensive. They're only a couple hundred bucks. And I know different clients have different thresholds as to things that may be a tracked asset. Well, just because the finance team doesn't want to track it because they're not depreciating it or anything else doesn't mean we may not want to track it. Could we, could we tag those and track who has them? So as we hit a situation like COVID, which all of a sudden all of our businesses are closed and we're not in the office, well, who has all of these things? Do we need to could we potentially um, get, you know, get some of them back from people that don't really need them right now to people that do need them? We don't have to buy more devices would be a, a specific use case example of, hey, here's, a, here's an asset, it costs money, it's something that we're tracking, and how do we get more out of it? I'm gonna switch back over to my presentation here. We're at, so our next webinar that's coming up, and what I wanna do is I'm gonna open this to questions, um, is explaining how you can be proactive rather than reactive when it comes to using the CMDB, and we'll get into some, some examples and some real-time sort of stuff uh, within the CMDB. More effective change in problem management strategies, how, how these details all pull together, discovery tools that are available and the things they can do. It'll be very, very cool. And that'll be hosted on the 21st of, of May uh, at 2 p.m. Registration link will be sent to all of you um, uh, as, long as, as well as a recording from today's webinar. Now I wanna open the floor up to questions. What sort of questions do you guys have? This first pass was kind of the basics of CMDB. I know for many of you, you're very familiar uh, with the CMDBs and you, th th this may have been something that was all stuff that you already know. But for some of you, this may be something new that you're getting into. So I will take a breath and uh, in, if, in the chat, you can uh, put in your question um, uh, or Tabitha, we can unmute them too if they uh, want to raise their hand, right? Yeah, I can. Okay. Uh, we did have a few come in if you wanted to open the chat window or the questions window. Oh, questions window. Okay. I had the chat window open. Okay. So pop, populating and updating the CMDB. Can you do a CSV import to populate and update? Sharewell CMDB. Absolutely. Within uh, Sharewell has an import tool to pull um, data in from a CSV or even an Excel spreadsheet which is you know, CSV is just another form of, of a spreadsheet uh, and be able to uh, populate uh, that data uh, within um, the, the, the CMDB. But in addition, um, there may be other methods that you may wanna leverage in order to uh, get that data into the CMDB. Hopefully that, that answers that question. Um, so no, no discovery tool, uh, no one taking time to build manually. Um, so beyond the, uh, uh, oh, okay. Uh, um, you know, be, be beyond that, that, that would be an example of um, pulling in the, uh, the, the, the details, you know, which could be from a CSV import as an example. Um, and, it, it uh, th that that starts to give you that baseline CMDB, um, and maybe that's data you're extracting from different sources, and then you populate, you seed it, and then that's that kind of initial seeding of your garden, and then you're going to maintain it and manage it um, uh, to 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 do that. 
Um, if you don't have a discovery tool and you don't have the data tracked anywhere, it gets a little bit more complicated. You need, probably possibly need to do an inventory um, of, of that data. Maybe you have, maybe you're purchasing Dell computers. Uh, we, we get through this, go through this with some of the manufacturers every once in a while. They may have provided a, uh, maybe able to provide you a, an actual sheet that has all of the assets that they have shipped to you. Or if you're a CDW customer or a customer of one of those kind of guys, they can give you some of that, that detail. And that may be what you could seed the database with. Um, if you're purchasing them onesie, Tuesday at Staples, um, that'll be more complicated. Um, and you may have to do a hard target inventory, but you only necessarily have to do that once and then you can maintain it going forward. Um, Caleb, you had mentioned we have one that's poorly maintained, manually imported, and no longer really used actively. Um, that's a common problem that we see. Quite frankly, it's a common problem that we see. Uh, and it really comes down to active maintenance is what's really required um, in order to uh, really make sure the CMDB stays healthy. Um, and that becomes, it's it, kind of like a KCS discussion, right? KCS Knowledge Center Service, it's a you know, methodology for, for, uh, for doing uh, knowledge, knowledge bases and knowledge articles. Um, it becomes incumbent upon everybody to be a good steward of the data. Now, the other effective way we saw that done at one of our customers, um, where they, their previous CMDB and their previous tool have been poorly maintained and they didn't want to re repeat the mistakes of the past, um, the, the hammer came down from above. And the, one of the, the IT directors actually is it, very active in looking at the CMDB kind of as one of those grand poobahs. And so you don't want an email from her asking you why the, your data seems outdated. Now, one of the things, and Steve, I'm gonna steal something that, that you guys did, which relates to your, your applications. Um, at Atlantic Health for their applications, they have a yearly process that requires the owners of the asset to go in and confirm the asset data is still valid. And so they've got to take an overt action. They get a warning, they get an email, they've got a date deadline of which to, to actually take the action. If they don't, they start getting nasty grams. And then I'm sure Steve has a, a, a couple of, uh, of friends um, that in dark suits that'll come visit you if you end up on the bad list um, and not getting your data updated. But they did that as a, as a process because there was no discovery tool or anything else to do that. And, and there was a process that they needed to put in place and they could leverage the tool set to do that. Uh, example of a system of a system CI, like an HR system or a payroll system or SaaS that may have internal dependencies. So Paul, you know, in that particular case, the example of a, of a system CI, that could be an example of a system CI, or do you want to build your own CI that might be uh, an application? It depends on what, at what level you wanna be able to do that. Now, if at a very high level, we have a customer that does this, where they have th their systems are actually related to the services they deliver, and they correlate the CIs, to the, to the, they use the system CI out of the box in Sharewell, they correlate that to the actual service. Um, you could correlate the CI to the service already, but they wanted to look at it from a CMDB perspective. So they could visualize what are all of the assets that fall under this. Um, but you could use the out of the box system, you could build your own CI to do that for sure. Um, uh, times there are, there are different teams wanting to use different tools. How do we get one CMDB to rule them all? So Rob, my friend, that takes executive leadership jumping into the fray and saying, we're gonna do this one way. Uh, or um, as we have in, in one case, there was actually a very good uh, argument made um, as to why the desktop team was gonna use this other tool to do the active management of their data. Um, but, what we got support from executive management on us is, is we still wanted the CMDB to be a single pane of glass. So we, we used their data that they're correlating in, in the system that they have, and we built an integration into Sharewell, and we pull that data just like we would from a, any discovery tool on a regular basis. And they were actually very active in that process and really excited about, okay, we get the data up there, so now we can tie it in and, and, and they put a little, a little link in there that they pull over from their system where if you click on it, it goes to their system, which has all kinds of other stuff that they feel is super important. But it was a term and really didn't need to be in the CMDB. So that was a way in which, um, it, you know, kind of working with that in-between state 
of this team wants to use this other system to manage the data, we're still populating it into the CMDB. Um, and the CMDB gives us that single pane of glass, but there are other systems that are providing the gold source data. So is there a guideline of how, how, how detailed you go when building for the first time? So Joe, this is your question. Should we start by defining the level of time, um, network versus switch versus, uh, versus port? Um, you're correct. When you come out of the gate with your CMDB, don't go crazy because you'll end up going completely insane trying to build for everything that can be built out there. Start with the basics, right? Then you can always extend your CMDB and at your uh, network level, maybe you're going to define your ports and those ports now may correlate to another CMD, another CI that's out there. Um, but you, you don't want to boil the ocean in the first go around. So when you start out, start with the basics. Let's get our our, our computers, our servers, um, our, our network devices, as much as you can get into the CMDB uh, initially, go through your, uh, I, I call it, kind of talk, call it the fitting out phase, where you start to get comfortable with what's there and how we're using it. And then from there, you can figure out what your next step is, because all, all too often, I, 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 we get these where we want to track every IP address on this, this uh, server, and we want IPs to be a CI. Well, then they don't maintain the IPs real well, and then they want to assign one, and it's not there, and it starts to become a little bit of a nightmare. And then they start to figure out, well, we didn't need to do all that. If the person maintaining the CI just put the IP addresses in there, that would be good enough. Okay, so you take it, you do you do it in increments, um, and and you look at it as, as as evolving your maturity. Start at that at that 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 zero level maturity. Let's have let's get to a level one maturity where we have a basic well thought out, well maintained CMDB, and then let's expand it and grow. It's that continual service improvement and how you do that. So the import tool to, uh, does it also allow to populate other options in ShareWell, i.e. service offerings, et cetera. Sure, anything can be imported using the import tool. Um, so uh, to, to give you an example, this is a ShareWell specific question um, and a lot of the experienced folks on the phone know this already, but you have three tables, for example, that make up your classification service, category, and subcategory. You can, and we generally have customers build their categorization structure in a spreadsheet, and then we break those out and import those in to get the services. Now, if we're doing more from a service level management perspective, and we've got other values we want to populate on a service, that could also be done in a spreadsheet to more easily manage the data and get it pulled in as an all-in-one uh, uh, sort of effort. Um, so, and, and you can import incidents if you want to from a spreadsheet. Um, that is fraught with a lot of uh, danger because you've got fields in there that are required and everything else. So there's things you have to think about, but really anything that's a, that's a object as we call it in ShareWell is really a table in the database and we can import in the, any table that's out there if we want to. So John asks, um, do you have any clients using Microsoft Intune or to, as a discovery tool? I, I have not run into any on that, John. Um, as, or, as organizations move away from SCCM and into the hosted environments, Intune is becoming one of the modern PC management applications. We don't have anybody using that. One of the challenges, with, with, honestly, with some of Microsoft's online tools is the last thing that, that Microsoft does is build an API for it. So those of you that are ShareWell customers that are on the phone have seen the demos of, of 10.x, which I was showing. Um, they have an, ShareWell has an integration with Slack, and everybody goes as a communications tool. Why didn't you do it with Microsoft Teams first? Well, because Microsoft Teams doesn't even have a fully baked uh, uh, API yet to even really talk to Teams in an effective way. There's other methods that are very kludgy that can be used, but the API is lacking a lot. So as long as Microsoft Pay, pays attention to those things, um, and uh, Intune uh, ha, has an API. I'm sure it, 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 integration can easily be done um, with that of which to populate it. One of the beauties is with the webhooks that are now available in version 10 of ShareWell, you could actually make that a more active uh, process where if something changes in Intune, it can actually trigger a webhook call to go update that CI. So it wouldn't necessarily have to be done as a scheduled pull. It could be done more as a push. Uh, some of the other uh, discovery tools that are out there are things 
um, that uh, uh, some of the other things that are out there uh, that are other uh, tools, um, like uh, Device 42, I'll pick on them as an example. Their population of your ShareWell is actually done through ShareWell's API as a push rather than a pull. So you have a lot of granular control over what you do. Um, and I think we're going to see more of that rather than them being pulls through an API is pushes from the other side. I think that's going to become more common uh, as the tools to do that. Um, and APIs become so much more ubiquitous um, within uh, the, the, the ecosystems that are out there. Um, the uh, next question was from Caleb. So we use case. So Dell case, I think, is it still called Dell case or Dell? I think Dell bought Quest and it's now called Quest case. Um, but the case tool to track active desktop inventory, can this information be directly imported? Now, we've done integrations with that when it's an on-premise case system, um, but it also can be done through um, their, their hosted platform as well. That's been done many times um, by uh, custom, uh, customers that are out there to pull from Dell. Dell case is a common one we run into, um, as with SCCM, um, and Landsweeper is a super common one we see. And then there's 10 billion different discovery tools, but Dell case we run into quite a bit. Um, and so there, there is an integration that can be done with that. And there's already um, some uh, integration points that are already built. So it's not like you have to build it from scratch. It's been done multiple times. So you're not blazing a new trail. So Jason asked, um, how can ShareWell help with business processes to help with the CMDB uh, and maintenance? So I gave you that example of something goes missing, right? The other things that it can do um, is if you're feeding event management data into it. So uh, when I had the screen up, some of you may have noted that the one mail server was red. Well, the reason that that mail server was red is that a, an event system had sent data to ShareWell that based on the rules that were there, told us that that system was down. So I put it into a down state. Um, now, when something goes into a down state, that could automatically be triggering uh, alerts to say a network operations team. We just have had a device that went down and they may be seeing it through other stuff, but sometimes that event data starts to become very noisy um, and they don't always catch it right away. So if we mark something as down, does that start to now trigger out various alerts? So you can start to build, and we have a couple of customers that have a higher high level of maturity. It takes a little while to get there because you got to figure out and go through the process of understanding how do we want this to interact, um, but it, does give you the ability to do that. Now you start to think about other use cases. So there's a map for ShareWell called ITAM, IT Asset Management. Um, and it's about procuring devices. One of the cool things that it does is it has an integration to CAM if you're using CAM, but even if you're not, it will create the stub records of, as you do receiving, of the CIs that are out there. So it'll create stub records for the CIs. You can mark them, you know, mark the devices as received, start to create stub records. Hey, we should, we should have five new devices that'll be showing up at some point. Um, so there's a lot of ways to, 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 to use that and to, to leverage it to make the, um, make the system do a little bit of work for you, but it takes a little bit of time um, to uh, really build out those processes. You have to think through them and get them designed so that it's gonna do the things you want it to do. Um, I call it ShareWell Voodoo. Um, trademark, Mike Fuson. Um, ShareWell Voodoo is that stuff that we all do as admins behind the scenes. You know, there was a, a meme that I found um, out there that said, when everything is running great, nobody, you know, nobody really even thinks that the IT department exists, but wait till something breaks. And then everybody's hollering, right? We do all this work to try to make, make sure that we're pretty much invisible that things just continue to run and they run without problem, without issue. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, something goes down and, you know, we're, we're in the doghouse. Um, so what are the things we can do to be more proactive? And that's some things I'll cover in the next webinar. Um, what, what are some of the proactive things that uh, we uh, could, could be working with um, and, and leveraging? So Steve Castellanos question was LOL. Um, do you have any other clients use CMDB to track their um, access control assets? Um, we, we have clients that have built CIs to track anything you can imagine. 
we've had customers take the network asset and break it into WAN assets and LAN assets because they want to track different data. We have a number of customers that actually track all the way to the circuit level. They have circuits. We have uh, customers that track power devices. And based on the type of device that you pick in there, gives you a different screen as to what data needs to be tracked on that device. So it could be a UPS, a generator, um, uh, backup batteries that are not UPSs uh, in, in, in certain locations that they have, all sorts of things. We have a customer that tracks radios. So think of you know, CB uh, handheld radios. Um, they track the radios um, in the system um, and details about those radios. So really, if you can track, uh, if it's something that's trackable, you can build a CI to track that and make it part of your CMDB and then have it have relationships. So that customer that tracks that power stuff, they can tell you exactly what PDU a particular server is hooked up to or a rack if the rack's in there. And they've actually done racks as well. And they can tell you exactly what, what, uh, what rack position that server is in and what tile that rack sits on in the, in, within their data center. They've really matured out there. See, they didn't do it all day one. They started tracking servers and then they said, okay, it would really be nice to know, uh, uh, you know where, the, where that server is. Well, okay, that's it's in a rack. Well, okay, so let's start putting these things into racks. Well, now we, now we have a relationship with a rack and then which position in the rack is it? And then they said, well, gee, what if, what if we had a, a you know, data, center or data center rooms and we track the tiles? And so what tile does that rack? So, so you start to roll up and roll down as you look at um, the, the upstream and downstream relationships, that rack sits in this position. So we know where to find that server because we know what OU that server's in in that rack. You know, and then as Joe had asked before, you can get down to the port level. Okay, which switch and which port is that server attached to? Um, it's all going to be a matter of then building that. Now, when you start looking at that, they understood as they started to evolve their CMDB that it was going to be a higher level of maintenance was going to be required. So in changes <coughs> in their, <coughs> excuse me, within their change process, they have a, uh, a, a task that gets attached to every chain that you have to sign off on that says, did you update the CMDB? And then they have particular um, change type titles that they look for because moving a server in a rack is actually a standard change for them or, or, and, and or is a change template that they have. So they're actually able to tie it into that and say, did we have a rack move? And if we have a rack move, <clears throat> they audit it when looking at the change to say, did the CMDB get updated? Because they can see those baseline changes within the CMDB. So did, did it get updated? If it got moved and it didn't get updated, <clears throat> we've got a problem. And that was how they leveraged uh, the technology to be able to help them make sure the CMDB was being maintained. So Mike, I think we're going to end on that question. We did run a couple minutes over time. Okay, uh, um, th and that's fine, Tabitha, if you'd like, I can, uh, if people have to drop off, that's great. I can answer the last few questions in here. Okay, that's fine. We can keep going. So uh, you know, what relationship discovery mapping tool most often is most often used with ShareWell? I wish I could tell you there's one that's most often used. The ones we most often see <clears throat> are ShareWell Asset Management, which is made, made by ShareWell. Um, the, uh, and, then, and then tools that are, are typically um, technology alliance partners with ShareWell, so Device 42 or Resolve. The most common one we run into is SCCM, to be quite honest, because almost everybody has it. You know, Microsoft bundled it in with your Microsoft licensing agreement, didn't cost you anything, and that's what you're leveraging. Um, <clears throat> so those tool, th th those, those are some of the most common tools we see um, that are out there. Now, when you start to want to do discovery and dependency mapping, then you have to start looking at things like Device 42 or the Resolve product in order to really get, or FireScope is another one that's Technology Alliance partner of ShareWell. Um, or <clears throat> you may have a, a tool that you already own, can an integration be built to get that data over. 
you don't actually have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. But sometimes you want to take it up a notch. So it may make sense to, to, to replace the discovery. Um, and then, yeah, yeah quest, quest case. And, uh, and Rob said, you know, his, his head was so see, Rob, you know, uh, Pittsburgh people kind of think the same way, I think, uh, a lot of the time. Um, you know, uh, CM, CMDB, because if you make it everyone's responsibility, um, it, it, it can become uh, a, a great resource for you. But I'll leave on the note, remember it's like a garden. If it's not tended, it will grow weeds um, and then it starts to lose its value. I hope to see a lot of you uh, on our next installment of this call. We appreciate everybody joining us and, and participating. Thank you all so much. Um, have a great rest of your Thursday and have a fantastic weekend. Thank you.